I think Ryobi's trying to put all of us in the cleaning mood. the Ryobi power scrubber specifically is the soap dispensing power scrubber runs on their 18 volt one plus battery system and yeah it will even take the bigger batteries and we'll go over the details in just one moment let's take a closer look as always and look at the details of this unit we'll take it out and actually use it then come back and talk about what we thought of it as you can see the soap residual that's already on the power head this is the Ryobi PCL1701B uh, for the bare tool. If you get it without the battery, you can also buy it with a kit, with a charger, and a two amp hour battery, but this is the bare bones kit. In other words, we don't have a two amp hour battery here, but again, it's the PCL1701. And this is a power scrubber. It runs on their 18 volt uh, battery platform, but it's not just a power scrubber. They came out with the power scrubber, I think a couple of years ago. They have the little short one. They have kind of a medium sized one and a longer one. But this one is not only telescoping, so you can extend it as well as it is a soap dispensing power scrubber as well. You get this little container here. It screws on the side of this unit. And then you see a hose bib right there, stainless three quarter inch hose bib. So you can put your standard garden hose in there, clamp it down, and it's going to actually use the water and flow through here and into this soap container. So you, it comes with some soap solution and you pour it in here. The water is going to come mix with it and actually uh, draw it out and go to the head of the unit. Now on the flip side right here, you can see we have a dial here where we can choose none, which basically means you won't get any water, or we can just turn it to water, which obviously we're going to get water going to the head, or soap and water, which is going to dispense uh, this soap solution with the water out to the head. Now we have a power button right here, and it's basically push on and push off. And then we'll see a cord sticking out right here, where it's really not a cord, it's actually the cord and the water tube is picking up from here and flowing through because the telescoping portion right here, if I loosen this up and bring it in, you see that getting longer and shorter. So that's what that cord is sticking out for because when we telescope it in and out, it has to have some place to go. Now in its shortest position, from the top of the head down to the bottom, looking at 45 inches. And if we go full extended here, then we're looking at about 58 inches. Now to the handle, probably looking a lot less from the head to the handle, about 48 inches extended. But we can lengthen this as we need to for a better cleaning position. Get a secondary handle here or an auxiliary handle where you can hold on with a second hand making it easy uh, to maneuver this power scrubber. Now here on the business end, it also has an indexing head where we can set, I believe six different locations. So that's all the way one way. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So six different locations. So that would go straight up or on your ceiling or wherever you're needing to clean. Now you'll notice the hose that comes around here and you see a directing nozzle right there. So depending on what size brush we're running, we can aim that nozzle wherever we need to. Now it really doesn't go side to side, it just goes up and down. If you're running a real small head, then you can aim it pretty far down. Now it comes with this medium bristle, the yellow bristle brush, and this is a six inch brush is what it says. And basically it just turns about 90 degrees So line up that star, that triangle, and then turn it and it locks in. And now that's locked into the unit and ready to go. Now, I know one of the questions was asked when we reviewed the power scrubber a long time ago was, would it accept the larger batteries? Here's a nine amp hour battery. Fits in here. Get a nice waterproof or water resistant casing there. 
And so now our battery's in, nine amp hour, no problem. And again, push on and it's gonna stay on. And you're gonna get, I believe it's 210 RPM would be no load speed. And it's a pretty torquey unit. You can put some pressure on it. And it's still moving. Uh, it does have an override if it does get hot, which I'm assuming doing something like that. For an extended period of time, they say basically turn it off, wait 30 seconds, turn it back on, and it will reset itself. So if you do have a situation where you're using this a long time and it just shuts off and the battery's not dead, then power it off wait 30 seconds and it should power right back on. We haven't seen that yet, but we did read about it. Now, just to give you an idea, and by the way, that nine amp hour battery that's in here is gonna weigh a lot, but just to give you some idea of the weight of this, it's a pretty light tool considering what it is. So you're 10 pounds, one ounce with that nine amp hour battery. But you can see the nine amp hour alone is almost three pounds. Well, two and a half pounds, two pounds, nine and a half ounces. So to be a 10 pound tool, but four feet long is not too bad. Now my question is, as you're working with this and the hose is attached to it with water going to it, how heavy is it gonna be with you know, reaching up? I think that will be the kicker on how heavy it's gonna be with all that water running and the hose attached to it. Uh, so it may get quite heavy, 10 pounds is not bad. Again, holding it overhead could get definitely heavy, uh, but considering the size of the unit, really not that much weight. Now you'll see here, we have uh, some different brush head attachments. And what I thought was crazy was this is a six inch and then they sell some seven inch. I don't know why you'd have a six and a seven, uh, but then a nine inch and a larger 11 inch as well. I could see these being very handy on the larger sizes, covering uh, larger areas would definitely come in handy. And you'll also see uh, that we have it in the blue soft. Uh, the black is going to be the coarse, the very, uh, the very firm. And then the medium is going to be that yellow bristle. Uh, but that blue is a very soft feel to it. Uh, so if you are washing you know, glass, laminate, plastic, that sort of thing, that's gonna be your go-to. And that's probably what we'll use here in just a few moments. I'm not sure what these are going to run. Haven't seen prices on them yet. I think the small six inch are sell for somewhere between 10 and $15 a piece. I uh, expect probably these larger ones to probably be in the $20 range. I really have no idea, but I would just expect that if the smaller are in that you know, $10, $15 window. And I think it's the soft ones that are more expensive, which makes a little sense. But anyway, uh, let's go out and use this a little, see what we think. So first thing, I'm going to hook up the hose bib. Easy enough. And let's put in some soap. I do like that the wide base allows this to stand up just on its own, and even the hose is attached to it right now. No problem standing up. Go ahead and put the soap concentrate in. Okay, so I do have my water turned on to the hose. I've got this turned to none, so I don't have any water leakage. I was, that was another question I was gonna have, is is it going to seal well? So I have my hose already on wide open, no valve in between, and the valve here is definitely keeping that from running past. Now let's see here, we'll turn the water on. And so now we see we're getting spray out of the head. And it's spraying right there above and again we can turn this down to wherever we need to and then if i turn it on to water and soap now we see it it's actually kind of frothing in here and you can see it spraying on After I got some soap applied to it, I turned the water and soap off, suds it up pretty good. I think we've made quite a difference. Now let me turn just the water back on.
Still some residual in the bristle head. So we could definitely see some texture here in this garage door. Uh, and you can see that just spraying the soap on, you know, did not clean it, that it took some agitation. I can rub it with my hand and get a decent job, but still not getting in the pores like with the soft bristle brush. My concern about it being heavy with the hose on there is really not that bad. Can you feel a little bit of weight? Yes, you can. And again, if we were holding this high, it might get to us pretty quickly, uh, but it's really not bad when you're holding it kind of right at waist level or just about neck level. Again, apply some soap. And I'm gonna just water. Actually, I'll go off. I'm really just letting the tool do the work. Well, just like the power scrubbers that we reviewed a couple of years ago, we were pretty impressed with this telescoping soap dispensing power scrubber. Pretty much the same setup as far as the head on this uh, than the old one. So the power's there, it only turns 210 RPM, so it's not like it's polishing it off. It's actually moving kind of slow and steady. Got decent power, as you can see. I kind of laid on it pretty good and still couldn't stop it. So it turns pretty good. We never saw it go into that overheat mode either. Uh, again, it was just kind of a warning label that was on the machine when we got it. So we thought we would let you know, but we never got it to go in that overheat mode at all. It just slow and steady was really uh, working that garage door we were cleaning. Now, maybe if you're scrubbing on concrete with the, uh, the black coarse brush, that definitely may create some more friction and therefore need more power to do the work. The soap dispensing works very well. In fact, you really don't need to put it on the whole time. You just kind of put it on for a little bit. It gets in the bristles and you can scrub around for a little bit, then turn the water on and rinse it down. One thing that I kind of wish maybe there was an option, which you could probably do with a hose splitter or whatever, would be the ability to really flush it with water because you know the water that's coming out of here, it's kind of a fine mist, which is great because that's really what you want when you're dispensing the soap. But as far as really rinsing it off, you'll have to actually disconnect this off and, and rinse it down with, with a good amount of water. You're not going to do that from this jet here. So I wish there was ability, maybe a quick disconnect, which again, you know, third party stuff you can get all day long at Home Depot or wherever you're, you're shopping for that online uh, and be able to quickly disconnect and flush it down with water. But I just wanted to mention that uh, this little jet up here is not going to flush that and rinse all that soap off with just that little bit of mist there. But the misting worked great for the soap. It did a great job of dispensing the soap. Uh, definitely did plenty of soap. And the scrubber did a great job of scrubbing. And the soft bristles did not hurt the finish on our garage door at all. Now, I don't think I would have gone to like a medium bristle. Some people probably would. I'm just kind of a, I don't know. I, I really don't like using any type of brushes on a painted finish. So that's why I went with the soft. You can definitely step up to an 11 inch, um, a lot bigger brush to cover more area and even step down to the seven inch and even the six inch. I'm not sure why we've got a seven and a six. I am curious, I have not done this yet. Supposedly that was a six that came with the unit. Yeah, and I guess it's just a bit smaller uh, than the seven inch. And one thing I'm noticing here is the one that came with it is kind of a, uh, a flat face and these newer ones kind of have a concave look to them. So looks like they're kind of covering more area and being able to roll the sides on this versus the old ones where you just kind of flatten it out. So looks like these newer, uh, maybe the Vortex uh, bristles or Vortex brushes have that rounded edge on them uh, to be able to, I don't know, round over and, and be able to clean it in easier corners, things like that. So 
That's pretty cool that the newer bristles are, are not that flat face design. Hey, we'll have a link in the description. I believe the tool is out. Uh, these brushes, these extra brushes are not out yet. Uh, we'll make sure to fill in that description when we do have links to these. $169 for the bare tool. $199 if you want to buy it with a two amp hour battery and a charger. So check it out. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, well then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.